untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black green of Vorinclex counters deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, which features three copies of a Vorinclex monstrous raider, a six mana 6-6 six six legendary creature Phyrexian Praetor with trample and haste, saying if we would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, put twice that many of each of those counters on that permanent or player instead. So that includes plus one plus one counters on our creatures, as well as loyalty counters on our planeswalkers and counters on our sagas, which will reach the second chapter right away. And then if an opponent would do the same, instead they get to put half that many of those counters around it down each time instead. So the opposing sagas are not going to work while Vorinclex is in play. They won't get any plus one counters if they just would get one instead. And of course their planeswalkers are also reduced in loyalty, so Vorinclex has a very big impact while it's in play. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, of course we've got plenty of synergies with Vorinclex, including plus one counters thanks to cards like the Great Henge, we've got Stone Cold Serpent, Scavenging Ooze, and we also have plenty of Sagas with Elspeth's Nightmare and Binding the Old Gods, which will reach the second chapter right away, and even some Planeswalkers with Garruk Unleashed and Garruk Cursed Huntsman, so plenty of synergy besides getting a 6 mana 6-6 six, six Trample Haste, and to power out our Vorinclex we even have four copies of Castle Garenbrick to potentially play it on turn 5 more reliably. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with two copies of Stone Coil Serpent, which every now and then we want to play out as a 1-1 creature just to enable our Lobstruck Beast to attack, and then in the late game also makes for a nice mana sink. Protection from Multicolored means it can be targeted by opposing copies of Binding the Old Gods, which is a very popular removal spell at the moment. Then at two mana we've got some spot removal with two copies of Heartless Act. That's one of the advantages of splashing black in our green Stompy deck, is that we get to play with actual removal spells instead of fight spells. And then we also have two copies of Scavenging Ooze, giving us a bit of life gain and graveyard hate in the late game. And the plus one plus one counters also synergize with Vorinclex. And a full play set of Tangled Florahedron, which we can play as a two mana ramp creature to set up our four mana plays on turn three. And there's plenty of powerful four drops we can ramp into. And then can also play it as a tap land to maybe enable landfall in the late game, which is useful for Kazandu Mammoth, which is our next card. Another creature we have the option of playing as a tap land if we just need mana instead. And otherwise a 3-3 creature with a landfall giving it plus two plus two so it can also help us set up a turn four the great henge which is one of the powerful sequences this deck is capable of with either kazandu mammoth or lobster beast which is the powerful adventure creature that can first make a 1-1 token with heart's desire and then a 5-5 creature afterwards that can only attack if we control a 1-1 creature so that's also where stone cold serpent can come in handy and then two copies of garrick's harbinger a three mana four three with hexproof from black so it cannot be targeted by spells or abilities in black which also includes sagas like Binding the Old Gods once again, and then if Harbinger deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker we can look at that many cards from the top of our library and reveal a creature card or a Garruk planeswalker card from among them and put it into our hand so Harbinger can find more creatures but can also find our three copies of Garruk, got two copies of a Garruk Unleashed, a four mana four loyalty planeswalker whose plus one ability can give one of our creatures plus three plus three and trample until end of turn, especially nice with large creatures like Lobster Beast that don't have any built-in evasion then the minus two creates a 3-3 beast token and if an opponent controls more creatures than we do we can put a loyalty counter on Garrick and then the minus seven can also be game winning letting us search for a creature each turn and if we play Garrick Unleashed while Vorinclex is in play he will enter with eight loyalty so we can use the ultimate ability right away then two copies of Questing Beast, that's just an individually powerful card, 4-4 four, four Vigilance, Death Touch, Haste, and I'm not going to read the entire card, otherwise it's going to take the entire video. And then four copies of Binding the Old Gods, giving us a nice removal spell that can deal with any problematic permanent, and then also ramps us on the second chapter to set up those early Vorinclex plays. And then topping off our curve, we mentioned three copies of Vorinclex, alongside our four copies of Castle Garenbrig, and one copy of Garruk Cursed Huntsman, which can also ultimate right away if we have a Vorinclex in play, and also just very powerful making wolf tokens and destroying creatures and drawing cards and then two copies of the great henge which we can place early as turn four with a turn three lobster beast or kazandu mammoth and then the mana base includes of course our dual faced cards here with florahedron and mammoth as well as two copies of turn timber symbiosis a seven mana sorcery which can look at the top seven cards of our library and put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield and if that card had converted mana cost three or less it enters with three additional plus one plus one counters on it so great at helping us find vorinclex but can also just hit one of our three drops and still make it bigger. 
And then we can also play it as an untapped land at the cost of 3 life. Got the full playset of Fabled Passage to synergize with our Kazanu Mammoth. We've got 6 basic forests and 4 basic swamps to fetch up, as well as 4 copies of Indatha Triome, which still counts as a forest for the Castle Garenbrick to come into play untapped. Can also search it up with our Binding the Old Gods as a forest that will still make black mana, and can also cycle it in the late game, so a ton of utility there. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that's missing a few too many lands, I'm afraid, in order to keep. So we'll take a mulligan, this is better. So, probably don't need to keep Stone Quail Serpents. And then we have to decide whether we want to Adventure Beast on one. I think I'm just going to play a Tap Triome. And then we might go turn 2 Ooze, turn 3 Nightmare, and then turn 4 Adventure plus play the Beast. Against a red deck, they might have Frostbite for the Ooze. So now it might be better to adventure and then play Beast on 3 anyway. And looks like our opponent has Frostbite for the token. But the Beast is still going to provide a nice blocker for us. And then we can play Ooze once there's some food in the graveyard. Robber of the Rich gets in for 2. Alright, it's a decent target for Nightmare, so we'll play that before our opponent runs out of non-creature cards in hand. And then next turn we can decide what to do next. Maybe play Beast, maybe play Mammoth. We suspect that they have a Frostbite in hand, so Beast is probably not going to attack if they end up killing the 1-1. But if they do, then Scavenging Ooze won't be the target of Frostbites. And alright, opponent's got Cleave and Frostbite. Now, we could take Frostbite and then start beating down with Lovestruck Beast. Although they still have double bone crusher to stomp the 1-1, one -one, so the beast is not going to get to attack. So I think we just take Cleave then, which is the most individually powerful card, even though we could eventually destroy it with binding. And then probably just attack for one as a starting point. Frostbite deals three right now with three snow lands, so it can also take out Kazandu Mammoth. So not loving any of my options, probably just going to play Lovestruck Beast, expecting the 1-1 one -one to get stomped, but at least we'll have a big blocker for Bonecrusher Giant. Opponent's going to stomp plus Frostbite instead, that also makes sense. Now we could have played Mammoth Tapped as a land in order to play Binding, but I don't think we need to do that now. Faceless Haven also a powerful card. For now our opponent plays Bone Crusher and another binding. Alright, now that we drew another binding, we've got a few more options. I can play Ooze and eat Beast to make it a 3-3 right away so it doesn't die to another stomp. And then play Mammoth Tapped so we can start casting binding. Seems reasonable. So a little bit of a nombo between Ooze and Elspeth's Nightmare, but that's okay. And then I'm not gonna trade with the Ooze since we'll have plenty of food once we start casting Binding. Could consider jumping with the 1-1, although it does block Rimrock Knight potentially. So I'll take four. Ah, there's a Rimrock Knight. And a Bone Crusher just played as a creature. Could imply that there's a Ember Cleave in our future, but I'm just gonna binding the giants. Since this is an ability doesn't trigger the giant. And then do we stay back with Ooze? Let's say our opponent does have an Ember Cleave. Not really interested in blocking with Ooze. I think I still attack. And then we'll play Florahedron so we have more mana to activate Ooze and play a bigger Stone Coil. Cleave definitely is gonna hurt. It could just activate Haven, attack with all, then I'm happy to trade. Alright, just a Fireblade Charger. Rimrock. Gonna chill. 
So do I want to chump? Next turn we get to Binding Giant once again. And potentially have a 5-5 five, five ooze. I think I can take 8. Get a Triome. Alright, so we can only eat one thing with ooze. Binding the Giants. And then I should probably eat now in case they draw another Frostbite. And then do I play Flora Heater? And I think I do. Now I'm more interested in jumping because we can just play Giant Stone Cold Serpent next. If they attack with Fireblade Charger, I just block Charger with Ooze. And then I would jump with a 1-1. So this could be bad if they drew another Frostbite or Bonecrusher Giant. But if that's the case, I imagine Rimrock Knight would have attacked. Ah, we get to untap and Great Hench is an amazing draw. So we'll get another tap line, I believe. There is an argument for keeping cycling lands in the deck now that we're kind of flooding out a bit. So yeah, I could see just getting a forest instead. And then we can play five mana hench. And then there's two creatures in the graveyard over there. Question is if we play Stone Coil. I think we do play a 4 4 Stone Coil here. That way, if our opponent has Goldspan Dragon, we can block it. As so we'll get a 5 5 Serpent. And there's Vorinclex. Alright, Scavenging Ooze can turn sideways or does it? I guess we can play it safe here. Keep back an extra blocker for Faceless Haven. And we should be able to take over with Vorinclex. Opponent sends both. This seems good enough. Rimrock Knight's gonna take out Ooze. And Foreign Clex will come down with two plus one plus one counters, although sadly our opponent explodes before we get to. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. What do we think of this hand? A little bit on the slow side, but probably still keepable. Opponents with a turn one adventure. This is just gonna fetch up a forest. Best draw here would be Flora Hedron, I think. Setting up turn three binding. Heartless Axe pretty good too. Can take out the 5 5. And then we just wanna hit some land drops. Binding can help us find lands for Garrick as well. Opponent stomps our face. And hopefully we'll just see the beast which we can take out instead of the giants, which I would rather deal with a different way. Ah, there's Lothrog Beast. So that potentially delays a turn for Henge. Harbinger turn 3. Still waiting for land 4. Hopefully it's an untapped one. At least castle will be untapped. And so will Fable Passage. So it's just a Triome and the various dual-faced cards that come into play tapped. And I imagine once we start hitting our land drops here, our hand's going to be pretty hard to beat if we get to curve Vorinclex into Garrick. Right, symbiosis I'll take. And then we'll binding the giants. And I imagine our opponent will chump Harbinger here, which is fine by me. So 
So our opponent's on the back foot. And our hand's looking good. Questing Beast will hit us for four. But we'll be able to Binding once again and connect with Harbinger. Take a beast and probably play Mammoth Tapped. No need to be greedy. And then it's time for Vorinclex to show up, I think. Bone Crusher goes face. Alright, I think in this case, what are we afraid of? Like an Ember Cleave could be bad. I mean, I could also just Garruk minus. It's not as exciting as playing Vorinclex, but then next turn, I guess Garruk doesn't have a plus ability, so it doesn't synergize with Vorinclex all that well. But if I play Vorinclex, attack with both, then Ember Cleave kills me on the way back, and if I stay back, Vorinclex would trade for the Giant, which I guess is still acceptable. Although we would take a bit of trample damage too. I think I'm gonna attack with Harbinger and then just hope they trade here, which would be the best case scenario. And then I was gonna leave back Vorinclex anyway, but we might end up playing Garruk and minusing. Find a Mammoth. Yeah, as much as I wanna slam down Vorinclex, I think... Playing around Embercleave makes sense. You ever to That's my kind of and then we'll play Florahedron tapped. And then next turn, we would have been able to Foreign Clack smash, but our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand, a bit light on early plays perhaps. Although we do get to fetch up a forest, so the castles are untapped at least. And then if we find a 2 or 3 drop, we should be okay. Facing a turn one Gilded Goose. Turn two Florahedron. All right, we'll just uh, pass in the next turn play Questing Beast. And then turn five, we can Great Henge or we can Foreign Clex thanks to Castle Garenbrick. All right, so given that I probably want a Vorinclex next turn. I think Binding here instead of Questing Beast makes sense. Gem Razor takes out our Binding. Hopefully that means our Great Henge is more likely to stick around now. And we didn't need the extra line to play Vorinclex anyway. Opponent's got their own henge, so we can maybe hope to draw another binding to deal with it. And often implies that they've got some food synergies. But at least they won't get any plus one counters from Great Henge as long as Vorinclex sticks around. So we're at 11, but we get to Great Henge plus Beast and even Garruk and Ultimate right away, so that's pretty exciting. So we'll start by playing Henge. And then. I think we just Garrick here. 
Minus seven. Hit for six. And our opponent concedes to the Garrick emblem here. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Facing Lurus of the Dream Den, maybe a cycling deck, in which case Scavenging Goose can also come in handy instead blue-black rogues. All right, so turn one. Do we adventure? Do we play Tapland? I think we probably want to play turn two Ooze. Won't be able to attack with the beast though if we don't make the token first. We'll just play Tapland for now and then decide next turn if we want to wait on the Ooze to maybe get some more food in the graveyard. Alright, so make a 1-1. One, one. And then next turn we get to play Beast. And then we've got a few copies of Binding that can deal with Rune Crab, maybe a Thought Thief that shows up. Bono's got a Cling to Dust to draw a card. And another Rune Crab. Vorinclax hits the graveyard. Harbinger could be nice too, and the uh, Hexproof from Black definitely relevant in this matchup. So I think that might be better than Beast, which is likely not going to get to connect. Now they could still have a Thieves Guild Enforcer, which can jump in front of the Harbinger. And there it is. Three to Death Touch. So unclear whether we want to start dealing with the Ruin Cramps before our entire library is gone, or if we want to deal with Enforcer so we can start attacking with Harbinger. They also have a Lurus that can eventually get those back. So let's see here. Next turn we also have the option of playing Ooze with Castle and then having a bunch of green mana to use the ability. For now, opponent might have a Drown in the Loch available as well to counter our next play. So let's see if this resolves first. And then we're most likely going to take out Enforcer, hoping that the opponent doesn't have more lands to enable Ruin Crab. Although this might bait out a counterspell. Opponent draws with Wind Robber instead. Attack for four. Could see another Enforcer jump in front. Alright, get to trigger Harbinger, probably take Garrick. Triple Rune Crab, pretty scary, 20 cards remain. At least we've been lucky to dodge Fabled Passage for now. Lurus in hand. So killing a Rune Crab's not going to make a huge difference here when our opponent can simply get it back. Now, do we even want to search up a land and take out another card from our library? Might still be helpful here, but definitely a close call. So our opponent's at 16. What's the fastest way we can kill them? Maybe go Lobster Beast plus Ooze, and then next turn Garrick can give them Trample. Yeah, I think we want to attack with Harbinger. Can always decline to draw a creature here if we don't want. 
Foreign Collects is tempting though. And so is Questing Beast, since that can attack past the Rune Crabs. Might still be better to Foreign Collects. Although if we expect some sort of counter spell or removal spell, getting the cheaper creature might be more beneficial. And it's not like we're going to have much time to leverage for Inclex's ability here. I'll take a beast. Use castle. And then go beast plus ooze. And get rid of enforcer. into the story to draw four. Probably gonna find a Fable Passage here, which can mill us for 18. And yeah, there it is. All right, the Ruin Crabs got us pretty good here. So we're just a little bit too slow to get our big trampling creatures in play. Thirst for Ooze. And there we go. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. We have a decent hand. Can keep a Heartless Act or Adventure Beast onto, and then turn 3, play Beast. Hopefully turn 4 will get to curve out. And there's Vorinclex with Castle Garenbrick to potentially ramp it out, so... So far, so good. Opponent on a green ramp deck. And yeah, don't mind playing out a beast here. Attack for one. And hopefully we'll pick up an untapped land. Opponent's got their own beast that they can adventure and play. Alright, it's a tap land for now. So, probably want to heartless act the beast to avoid any great henges from being cast. Although we do have an answer with binding. And then just play Florahedron tapped. Hit for five. Sure. Don't want to trade the 1-1 one -one for their 1-1 one -one since we are the ones controlling a Lovestruck Beast. With an untapped line I could also just ramp out Vorinclex and an ultimate Garrick the turn after. So we've got some options. Wicked Wolf gonna take out the token. That's fine. At least no food tokens to make it indestructible. Harbinger is the draw. So we probably want to... Binding... Play Mammoth Tapped, and then we're guaranteed Vorinclex. And then Garrick afterwards should be pretty powerful. Now I could also wait on Binding to maybe deal with the non-creature threats, like a Great Henge maybe. So there's a lot to think about. Definitely gonna play out this land. Yeah, I think Binding's probably good enough here. If I play Harbinger, doesn't have any amazing attacks. And by killing the wolf, we make it less likely that a fight spell might take out Vorinclex. Feasting Troll King, all right. That can block Vorinclex. So hopefully it doesn't get uh, destroyed by a fight spell. And then... Next turn we get to play Garrick. Death Touch also nice with Vorinclex's Trample. Bonus got their own Henge. 
And we'll take seven. Brontodon could take out its binding, but that's okay. At least it doesn't get any counters thanks to Vorinclex stopping the Great Henge. So binding is gone. And the Witch's Oven. Alright. So we should be able to play Garrick and uh, Ultimate right away. And then it's just a matter of time. Run out Harbinger, just add more power and toughness to the board. Could have also saved Fable Passage in case we end up getting Kazanu Mammoth to enable Landfall twice. This should be fine. No attacks. And what's the first creature we get? Could get Questing Beasts. That seems reasonable. Could go for scavenging ooze and starts munching on the graveyard, which is a way to stop their uh, feasting troll king from coming back. I'd like you to meet my family. And the counters will also be doubled thanks to Vorinclex. Ooh, Ugin Spirit Dragon. That's a problem. Although it does come down with half loyalty, thanks to Vorinclex, so it wouldn't be able to minus six. To fail. This is going to minus three instead, which does deal with ooze. I guess we might as well gain some life here. And exile. Don't think it matters. So just the Troll King remains, but we've got a second Ooze to search up. And a second Vorinclex for that matter. Now if I trade, then they would just be able to bring the Troll King back before the Ooze is in play. So I think for now we let Garruk die. Blocking also wouldn't be super helpful. And then we'll get a second Ooze. Kazanu Mammoth. So I'll play Mammoth, keeping up as much green mana as possible, although we can also filter it with Castle Garenbrig. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. So yeah, yet another Garruk ultimate thanks to Vorinclex, also stopping Ugin from wiping our entire board. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand's a little on the slow side, but it will eventually do something quite powerful with Vorinclex and then Garrick being able to ultimate right away. We'll try it. Hopefully we don't get run over. Temple of Abandon, so this is the Tybalt's Trickery deck. Just want to apply as much pressure as possible. So if I play turn two ooze, I can still play turn three harbinger. Might not be able to play turn four questing beast, but I think that's fine. All right, opponents not doing much yet, so they might not have their trickery plus zero mana card yet. We did pick up Fable Passage, so we'll be able to Questing Beast on 4. And then turn 5, maybe Vorinclex thanks to Castle. Would be nice to see a Garruk Huntsman ultimate. 
All right, there's Stone Coil plus Trickery. And our opponent misses with a Tormod Script. Slightly relevant with Scavenging Ooze in play, I guess, but not what the opponent was hoping for. Binding is going to be valuable, so I think this turn we could actually wait on Questing Beast and instead go for Vorinclex next turn, which can also potentially stop a lot of the opponent's hits, like Kyurabas the Sea God, for instance, one of the Sagas that the Trickery deck plays. And then I can activate Ooze to Exile Stone Cold Serpents to get in one more damage, and I can activate it if they sacrifice once again a response. Could have also waited for Harbinger to hit in case we hit another cheap creature we wanted to play, but I think we'll be fine. Opponents at 11, and I guess they might just be dead to Vorinclax attacking, which would be a bit disappointing. Alright, another Tormal Script plus Trickery, so they're gonna try again. Alright, there's definitely some hits that could still be quite good for the opponent, but they hit another Stone Quill Serpent. And our opponent explodes. Alright, so overall, Black Green Vorinclax, a pretty fun deck, capable of doing some powerful things, especially once we get Vorinclax in play and get to play some Planeswalkers, but we also saw the effect of potentially stopping opposing Planeswalkers coming into play with half their loyalty, as well as negating plus one counters and potentially Sagas as well. So Vorinclax, definitely a card to be reckoned with and standard, but for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.